In this video, I want to talk about the difference between average speed and average velocity. These are the, the difference between these two and these two topics are something that drives students nuts. There are all sorts of confusion and we're going to try to deal with that here. The key to understanding the differences between average speed and average velocity is to never ever use your intuition. <laughs> If you use your intuition and guess what you think they are, you will always get them wrong. I'm going to give you the definition of these two terms, and from here on out you will always use these definitions to calculate these terms exactly and nothing else. Uh, the first thing though is you need to know the difference between distance and displacement. If you haven't watched the video on distance versus displacement yet, you need to do that first. Or if you've forgotten, go watch it again. Okay, assuming you know the difference between distance and displacement, we're going to now tackle average speed and average velocity. The first thing you do is you choose two points in time, which I've identified here as an initial time and a final time. And so presumably these are the two points in time about which, over which you want to calculate the average speed and average velocity. Okay, so once you have your initial and final time, you need to calculate the time difference, which is the final time minus the initial time. You've done that? Excellent. The time average speed, and that's, let me emphasize that for a second. When when books talk, kinematics books talk about average speed, they mean the time average speed. And the average velocity, they mean the time average velocity. They don't say that specifically, but that's what they mean. All right, so the time average speed is then the distance divided by delta t. And the time averaged velocity is the displacement over delta t. That's it. Now remember, when you dealt with distance and displacement, we found that they're not always the same, and often they're different. By the same token, then, the time average speed and the time average velocity are often different. The, this is, again, because distance is a scalar, the time average speed is a scalar, and be t because the displacement is a vector, the time average velocity is a vector. All right, so let's do a quick example. All right, for the example, I've brought this position function, x of t is equal to 2t minus t squared. And over here, now I have a graphical representation of this function between 0 and 3 seconds. It goes uh, from 0 up to to positive one meter, meters and seconds, and then it comes back through zero, and then down to negative three. And so, if I'm interested in two points in time, uh, t is equal to zero, and t is equal to two seconds. What is the time average speed and velocity? So first, I need to find the, the distance. Okay. So the distance traveled between 0 and 2 is it goes up to 1 meter and then back down to 0 so the total distance traveled is equal to 2 meters okay well I also need to calculate the time difference and the time difference is equal to the final time minus the initial time and so that's equal to 2 seconds and therefore the time averaged speed as to time averaged speed is equal to 2 meters over 2 seconds or 1 meter per second. Fine. What's the displacement? Remember the displacement is the initial position, sorry, the final position minus the initial position. The final position at t is equal to 2 seconds is 0. The initial position at t is equal to 0 is 0. Therefore, the displacement is 0 meters. And therefore, the time averaged velocity is equal to 0 meters over 2 seconds or 0 meters per second. Right? So displacement divided by the time interval is equal to this is 2 seconds. Um, 
is is gives us the time average velocity, which is zero. So if the displacement zero, the velocity zero. Do you see why you don't want to use your intuition about what this means? If you have to calculate a time average speed or a time average velocity, find the distance, find the displacement, and then use that definition. Let's let's do one more. Let's now say same function time initial is equal to zero and time final is equal to three. Okay, this gives us a time interval of final three minus zero or three seconds. All right, what is the distance traveled? Well, the whatever the object is starts at zero, it goes up to, to one, there's one, then it comes back down to two, and then it goes uh, three more for a total distance of five meters. So the time averaged speed is equal to the distance over the time interval, or five meters over three seconds, 1.3 meters per second. Scalar, again. Okay, and now we have let's get something different for displacement. Well, that's the final position minus the initial position. The final disp disposition is uh, negative three. The uh, initial position was zero, so the displacement was negative three meters. That's a vector. It has a magnitude of three meters and it's pointing in the negative x direction. And so now we can calculate the average velocity, the time average velocity, which is the displacement over the time interval, or negative three meters over three seconds, or negative one meters per second. Time average velocity is a vector because displacement is a vector, so this is telling me that the time average velocity is a vector whose magnitude is one meter, and it's pointing in the negative x direction. So you'll never get one of these wrong again. Well, maybe they can be. This, these are the, uh, a source of a great many number of trick questions. So always um, have your guard up when you encounter average velocity and average speed. Take de great detail to find your distance and your displacement, know what those mean and their differences between them, and then after you find the time interval, you can calculate either the time average speed or velocity.